Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the currency input widget by building a currency converter app on AppSmith. I'm sure this is definitely going to answer every question you may have when it comes to using the currency input widget. So are you ready? I'm sure you are. So let's get started. So right here we have a blank application and the only thing we have set up here is the currency conversion API, which is from Amdorin. I highly encourage you to check this out, the Amdorin API, in case you like to build along. So taking a look at this API, what is required is the API key in query params. It also requires the from currency, the to currency, and the amount. So we'll be building this out as we go along with using the currency input widget. Now let's head to the canvas and actually drop in some currency input widget. So let's search for the currency input widget. All right, so I'm just going to drop one here and we need another right here. And let's also bring in an icon button widget. All right, so I'm just going to place this in between and then we have a nice icon button. So I'm going to edit this to be a Chevron right, all right? And this looks so much better. So going into the currency input widget, we actually want it to be possible for users to select a currency. So all we need to do here is to enable the allow currency change. And here it's possible for users to actually click on the drop down and select a currency. Now it's also possible for you as a developer to set a default currency. And that's where the uh, default currency option comes in here. So you can supply this via JavaScript or by using the drop down which is available right here. So let's also allow currency change in the second input. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually read the currency values in the API we have configured. So let's head back here and go to the convert API. And here in the form currency, all we need to do is access the currency code of the first currency input widget. So this is going to be currency input one dot currency code and here we have usd showing up now let's also do the same for the two currency so this similarly would be currency input two dot currency code but before typing that in you can see that we have some other properties here like we have the country code which could be useful if you want to access the country code of the selected country you also have the text value and you also have the value value the difference between a text and the value is that the text property actually contains the formatting of whatever input is given by the user so if you have commas and all of that the text property keeps that formatting but the value property is the actual value without any formatting added in so this can also come in quite handy when you need them to. So let's go in to select the country code and here we also have USD. So next we have the amount and let's go into pulling the amount of the first currency input. So we can do this by um, typing in currency input one dot value so that we can grab the entire information without the formatting. And right now it's undefined, which is actually fine. So heading back to the canvas, what we want to do is to wire up the icon button to make a request to the convert API whenever it's, it is clicked on. And the response from the convert API should actually be displayed in the currency input too. So for the default text here, what I'm going to do is reference the convert API dot data dot amount which is actually zero right now. All right, so now that we're done with building the application, we can actually go in to test this out. So let me go ahead to convert one USD to USD, for example. So I'm going to click on the convert button and you can see that one USD is equal to one USD. So let's try converting from one USD to yen, for example. So let's search for yen and hit the convert button. And you can see that we have 125 yen, one USD equals 125 yen. Now we've been able to build a simple currency conversion application and this illustrates how you'd go about using the currency input widget. Now you might be interested in using the regular input widget. So we've made a video right here that explains exactly how to use the regular input widget with validations and all of that. Or you might be interested in how to pass 
query parameters to API calls like we did in the conversion API. We made a video here outlining all of the various ways in which you can do that. All right, this will be all for today's video. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment section and I'm going to see you in the next video. Stay safe, take care, bye-bye.